Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology with your favorite board-certified neuropathologist, Andrea Gilbert. Today, today we are going to talk about uh, the histopathologic diagnosis of a very common intracranial neoplasm. But first, a few housekeeping items. Number one, if you like this video, please click the like button at the bottom of your screen. Additionally, if this video that this video is meant for medical education purposes only and is not intended to be used for medical advice, if you or a loved one have a, a tumor um, of the central nervous system, please talk to your doctor immediately. Again, this is meant for medical advice. This is meant for medical education purposes only. Okay, so let's get started. Today, we're gonna to be looking at this tumor here. Now, a neurosurgeon went in, patient had a uh, tumor, probably arising from the dura. The neurosurgeon went in, took it out, and gave it to me, the pathologist, so that I could look at it under the microscope. And so this is what this tumor looks like. So let's get a, uh, just a general overview of this tumor, okay? There is this pink thing right here, okay? And it looks like the tumor is kind of attached to this pink tissue here. So let's take a closer look. Okay, so this pink tissue is very thick and it has a, um, a, just a few of these nuclei that are fibroblast cells. Here they're cut in cross section, here they're cut in longitudinal section. Again, uh, a very posse-cellular type tissue um, with fibroblasts, that's what these cells are, fibroblasts making up the majority of the, of the few cells within this tissue. So this is a typical appearance of fibroconnective tissue or dense fibrous connective tissue. And so in the neuropathology world, when we see this type of tissue, we know that this is most likely dura in the neuropathology world. Once you get into soft tissue world, that, that's a whole different story. But for neuropathology, when you see this dense fibrous tissue, this is gonna be dura, usually. And attached to this dense fibrous tissue, it looks like there is a tumor, some sort of lesion that's likely a tumor, okay? Uh, meaning that it's not vasculitis or inflammation or infection. This looks like a tumor. Specifically, it looks like a mesenchymal tumor. Uh, the cells do not seem to have very discrete borders. It's somewhat difficult to tell the difference between one cell and another, where one cell ends and another cell begins. They have indiscreet or indistinct cytoplasmic borders. So this appearance is generally called a syncytial appearance where it's hard to tell where one cell ends and the other cell begins. If we look at a little bit lower power, sorry, we can see that there are some areas where these cells, they form a whirling pattern, okay? They form these little whirls, these little circles here, and we call this a whirling type architecture. Here's some more, and here's some more, and here's some more, okay? So all of these whirls um, is very indicative of a certain lesion, and if we look on higher power, we can see that some of these nuclei uh, which are kind of elongated, oval, um, almost egg-shaped nuclei. They have kind of a vesicular appearance to the chromatin. So what, what do I mean by that? Well, the chromatin is kind of light in the center, and it is um, more densely compacted around the edges, okay? So it's got a little bit of margination to the, to the cells. You can see that a little bit here. You can see that a little bit here and a little bit here, okay? So there are many of these cells that have this kind of vesicular cytoplasm, sorry, vesicular nucleus, where the chromatin is a, a little um, more marginated along the edges, and that's very typical for this tumor. So what do we have here? We have a tumor that is attached to the dura. It has a very noticeable whirling pattern. It has a syncytial appearance to the cytoplasm, 
and it has this marginated look to the nuclei. In addition, some of these nuclei look like they have um, intracyto uh, intranuclear inclusions. Sometimes you can see that. Also, sometimes you can see intranuclear pseudo-inclusions. Uh, those aren't very prominent here, but occasionally you can see them. So basically, this is the overwhelming uh, appearance of a very common intracranial tumor called meningioma. Particularly, the whirling appearance of this tumor would lead me to think that this is a meningothelial meningioma. But if you notice, there are a few areas where the um, cells look like they're kind of falling apart. Uh, see how these cells are very viable? The nuclei are very much intact. And compare that to this area where the nuclei, they don't look like they're um, alive. <laughs> Uh, they don't look very viable. You have red blood cells coming in here. Uh, and there's a few little neutrophils around the way, a little bit of inflammatory reaction. Again, here's viable nuclei. Here's um, not viable tumor cells, and the cells are starting to break up. So this is the appearance, and we can see that over here as well. This is an appearance of an embolized meningioma. So we can make out where the remains of cells used to be, um, but the overwhelming majority of regions here, there's the overwhelming majority of uh, regions here show that there is an influx of red blood cells. There's a few neutrophils here. Okay, showing uh, inflammatory cells. Here's another neutrophil. Here's another neutrophil. Okay, so we have a few inflammatory cells. This is a very, very typical appearance of a embolized meningioma. So what caused this embolized look? Well, the astute observer probably noticed that when I was cruising around here, there's this weird material here. Okay, so this here, this structure right here following along my um, cursor, this structure right here is a blood vessel, okay? And inside the blood vessel, we can see that there is blood, okay? All these little red blood cells, okay? And also, there is this material here, and it's not quite clear what this material is. You know, where are these cells? What is, what, what, what is going on here? Well, in fact, this is a synthetic material. It is not normally found within the human body. And this material is called PVA, or polyvinyl alcohol. Here's a little bit again. We can make out the wall of the blood vessel here. Oh, sorry. Um, and in the center of the blood vessel, there is this material here that should not be there in, the, in a normal person. But in this person who has this tumor, there is this embolic material called PVA. Again, that stands for polyvinyl alcohol within the blood vessel, which I'm outlining here with my cursor. And this material was put into the vasculature by a radiologist or an interventional radiologist. Again, we can see some nice whirling architecture here and some um, dead tumor cells here. This material was put into the um, uh, vasculature in order to embolize the tumor. And what that does is it prevents the tumor from um, bleeding copiously during the um, during the surgery. So here's another area. Here's the blood vessel here. I'm outlining the 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 wall of the blood vessel here, and here is this polyvinyl alcohol material. So basically, the diagnosis for this patient would be meningioma, meningothelial type, and um, it has been embolized. 
by PVA polyvinyl alcohol material. All right, so that completes the um, story for today. Please join us next time on Adventures in Neuropathology. Thank you.